what he's going to ordain is going to be in the hole. Mm -hmm. When you go through the book of Acts, you can see they were praying all together. It was blacks and white, mostly black. There was an Antioch in Acts 13. Okay? So we were around for a while, okay? And it was a, it was a mixed crowd. It wasn't just all black, but it was a mix, which is very important. Let us know that God is, don't have a problem with ethnicity. Right. So when he wants to get something done in the earth, he can do it with whoever. Yes. But he said, the, the voice came out of, it had to be a prophetic unction. It said, separate unto me, Paul, mm -hmm. Saul, and Barnabas for the work I've mm -hmm. called them unto. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Paul didn't get released until it had to be corporate. Wow. It was a corporate word that released well, yeah. Paul. Okay. That's my calling. My, my calling is straighten out wires. Uh, when, we, when, they, when we had this ministry, the first ministry, our first church anniversary was when uh, we had Apostle Kevin Woods. Y'all, anybody remember? Mm -hmm. yep. He said, God has given you ability to destroy pride. Right. You're going to be able to see people in pride. Mm -hmm. And God can give you keys to get them out. That's what he said. And so I still hold it in my heart. So I, you know, and spiritual pride is, whew, pride is bad, but spiritual pride is a whole nother horrible thing and it's very hard to get out. Once you go in, it's very hard to get out because of the scales that it has. It's, it's very, very, let me, let me leave that alone. Okay, that's for another teacher. Tell your name is for another teacher. <laughs> Yes, but we, we said on last week that God is seizing ownership of his church. All of the sibling rivalry that caused all the problem, the jealousy and the misjudgment and the animosity in the building process has been dangerous for a long period of time. And we've been doing things independent of him. But God is in this season and dismantling self and going to crush it to pieces. Yeah, That's what pressure, y'all. That's what y'all feeling. Self be gone. I know y'all feel it. It's it, it just like, man, I'm so tired of me. I'm just, I look in the mirror. I don't even want to put no makeup on. I don't even want to try. I mean, even when I go to the shower, I'm going to bypass the mirror. I don't even want to look in the mirror. It's just, it's just horrible. Anybody, come on now. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand because everybody next to you going to know it's you. But I'm here to tell you, 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 you just get tired of, sometimes you just get tired. But I'm giving a good season. That stone is rolling, the cornerstone. It's getting ready to destroy you. That stone that was cut out with the, with the man's hands over in Daniel 2. It's, there's a movement. And there's a government that's coming to you, through you. And you have to submit to it. Amen. You're going to have to submit to it. And so, self-importance has to go. Am I right? Herod can no longer kill the seed. We talked about Herod is the hero. No more heroes in church. I ain't a hero. I'm a servant. Amen. I thank God when people say, hey, apostle this, apostle that, prophet that. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about me. I'm all right. Because I, I heard it so many times. I've been doing ministry 20 some years, man. I've heard all kinds of stories. And the one that's the loudest normally the one that leaves the quickest. So I don't ever get lifted up. Because anybody's subject to change sooner or later. You know, they got to tell you how great you are all the time. It's, I'm, I get a little uncomfortable. Okay, where's oh, where the big one? It's coming. <laughs> I got to find out something. Ain't right. <laughs> but we need to know. We got to move forward. Tell you that we got to move forward. Tell them no more just being dismayed. No more being dismayed. Tell them don't be disjointed. Don't be disjointed. Tell them don't be a joint out of place. Don't be a joint out of place. Tell them don't be disembodied. Don't be disembodied. You know, you got to find somebody. Be with somebody. You know, if you, dis you know, disembodied simply means you have no way to express yourself. So that means what it means, disembodied. When you think about, you know, death, it's a disembodied. It's a caricature of the person. But we need to understand it's the same flavor with us. When we don't have a body to express ourselves in. That's disembodied, all right? Don't be distorted. Tell your neighbor, don't be distorted. Don't be distorted. Or disrupted. disrupted. Tell your neighbor, we are his body. We are his body. Individually. Individually. And collectively. And collectively. Tell him we lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves. When we have a personal destiny. When we have a personal destiny. Without understanding. Without understanding. We are his body. We are his body. Individually. Individually. And collectively. And 
collectively. Why? Because we're connected to God and each other. Which collected forever. And, and I don't care how you feel. I don't care if you like them or not. It's written. We are connected to God and each other with, which collectively brings forth the fullness of his life on earth as it is in heaven. That's why he taught us to pray. Our he didn't say my father. Right. That's right. He could have said my father. He thought he taught us our father. Which what? Are in heaven. What? Hallowed be thy name. On where? The kingdom come. On earth as it is in heaven. Hallowed be his name. It's not that you can't attach uh, some crazy uh, prefix to his name. Hallowed be. Remember he said, don't take his name in vain. Mm-hmm. Remember, you ever heard of that? That's in the Ten Commandments. Don't take his name in vain. His name, when we take it in vain, guess what it means? When we don't live up to what the name represents. We take that name in vain. Am I right? The name we take ain't Baptist. <laughs> the name we take ain't Kojic. Ain't Pentecostal. Charismatic. None of the denominations. That's not his name. A name that knows nature, mm -hmm. character, identity. Mm -hmm. Our identity is a son of God. Mm -hmm. If I'm anything less than a son, I take his name in vain. Mm -hmm. <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. So we need to have his fullness in the earth. So the divine future of God in each of us and through each of us gives us experience in the collective and connective purposes of God. We will never... Tell you, oh, yeah, tell you never, we'll never. We'll never. Now I got the rest. Find spiritual enlargement as an isolated, separate individual. But in relationship with others, can we witness the expansion of the unseen purposes of God being manifested on the scene? The greater the cohesion, the greater the manifestation. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. We will never see the wave of glory that we fast for and have revival for until there's a cohesion in cities, in churches. Trust me. I know Benny, Benny got away with it. Yeah. Yeah. And Catherine Kuhlman and some other folks, mercifully, God knew we needed something in there. So he, he, he would, you know, and, and most of the anointing that they got, it wasn't independent anointing. It came through legacy. Mm -hmm. Benny is a product of Catherine Coleman, I'm, I'm, I'm sure if I did some research, you'll find out she didn't get it herself. Mm -hmm. So it was passed generationally. Mm -hmm. So it was a transgenerational blessing. But we're not going to be strong, separate, individually. Now, this, I'm not just saying this house. I'm talking about the city. <clears throat> because when Paul wrote, he wrote to city churches. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And let me tell you something. The reason why we have individual churches, God is merciful. He, he, you know, he had to put something, a playpen together to, to hold on. He didn't want us to, you know, because some, some of us woke up and found out, well, you know, I need to come out of darkness. So he said, I got to put these pockets in, in cities and, and raise up men and women of God that's qualified to steward them in, in their level of immaturity until the church wake up in a region and grow up and find out we need one another. Because the stigma is we're still dealing with the mother of harlots, the mystery of Babylon, and we're dealing with Catholicism and Protest Protestantism, and you find out Protestant churches broke off from her, and so we're still dealing with that offshoot, that, that, that radical break from status quo. And so even with our individual churches, even if we make networks, it's still, networks itself is just temporary. Individual churches and locations are supposed to be temporary. But we're supposed to collect on another level and another greater glory is when we begin to understand the temple is not necessarily a location. The temple is the cities within it. I mean, the church is within the city. We make up, our houses individually make up the temple. You understand what I'm saying? Because when they came out of that, before Babylon, they, they had places to go to, uh, two places. Well, actually one that was in Judah. Because by that time, when they went to Babylon, Syria already ransacked the northern kingdom. Okay, so they were gone in about 722 A.D. So when 586 came and Babylon took over Judah, 
you know, some uh, 150 years later. Afterwards, they spent 70 years. I know I'm boring you, but after 70 years in captivity, Jeremiah had a wake up call. He said, We need to get out of here, boys. Okay, fine. He, said, he raised up, uh, who was that? Zerubbabel and, and them, and they brought him out. Amen. Nehemiah raised up, and he looked on the city. So this is mm -hmm. your Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when they came out, they took some practices. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So some of the practices got, mm -hmm. they got stained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what we saw in natural Israel when they had rabbis, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Synagogues. Mm -hmm. That's when Jesus showed up, it was all divided. They had synagogues in location. And so we're still dealing from the synagogue mentality. So I'm putting together a teaching. I probably won't teach it to this group, but I'm putting together a teaching on the, the temple and the synagogue. I was telling with uh, Dr. Kluwani, I'm seeing some stuff. Mm -hmm. And that thing has to be eradicated from our mentality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I was telling another apostle in this city that we can't, I can't carry what I'm carrying by myself no more. You know, it's going to take people because I believe there's people in your churches and people in my churches that can listen to you. Yeah. People in my churches and your churches can listen to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Better than the ones I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we just go along with the program because it's the only thing we know to do. Mm -hmm. But the next three years is we're going to have to find out we're going to do things a lot differently. Go ahead. Go ahead. And I ain't just blowing smoke. God knows how to do things. When he didn't want to leave Jerusalem, he raised up a persecution. They left. <laughs> he said, y'all want to leave? All right. Get them, Romans. <laughs> and they took off running. Amen. They had little cute meetings all of a sudden. The persecution rose. They went <laughs> and God knows how to get your attention. And I, I, I don't want them to get my attention mm -hmm. that way. I'd rather listen to 